lot of people ask me what tools I use and what you need, you know, in your home bar to make cocktails. And um, I thought I'd make a little video about it just to show you what I use. So first of all, I think you need a proper cocktail shaker. And um, this is called the Boston shaker. I'm sure you've seen this in bars. A lot of people are afraid of this because once this is put together like this and you shake it up with ice and um, it can easily get stuck pretty pretty hard here and you'll see even professional bartenders struggling with it trying to bang the bar with it just to, to see if they can open it and um, it takes a little bit of technique which I'm not gonna go into today I'm gonna uh, maybe I'll do a different video about that if anyone wonders but I highly recommend a proper shaker don't don't use your protein shaker or anything like that then when you have your shaker you need something to measure your cocktails with. And what bartenders use is something called a jigger. So if you watched my videos before, you might have seen that, you know, I, I only use this, but sometimes I'll say half an ounce, three quarter of an ounce, one ounce, and I pour it all into this. And that might seem weird, but I don't know if you can see here, but on the inside there are marks, two marks, and one of them indicates half an ounce, and the other one indicates three quarter of an ounce. Full ounce would be all the way to the top by the way then on the other side it's it's the same system on the inside here there's a mark for one and a half ounce and then all the way to the top is two ounces so that's how that works then when you've measured your cocktail you you shook it you're ready to pour it into a glass you, let's just pretend this is my glass you need something to strain it with and these are um, called hawthorne strainers just regular bar strainers um, you put that into your shaker, hold it firmly, and pour it into your cocktail. Easy breezy. If you want to take it one step further, there is something that we call um, like a fine mesh strainer or a double strainer. And this you use for when you have cocktails where you might have muddled fruit in there or maybe some herbs or whatever it might be. So what I do is I use the, the double strainer. It's basically a tea strainer. I'm, I'm sure most people have something similar to this at home. Anyway, and then you just double strain it. That's what it's called, it's double straining. There's another technique where you're not shaking a cocktail, but you're stirring it instead. So you would use this, which is called a mixing glass. These can be a little bit pricey, and unfortunately, since it's glass, they sometimes break. You have to be careful with them. When you stir a cocktail, you put your ingredients in there, and you put ice in there, and then you grab one of these fancy bar spoons, and you stir it, and that's it. Once again, stirring is also like a technique that you know we can talk about and how long do you stir a cocktail and what cocktails do you stir. And um, I'll explain that as I go when I make my cocktail videos since then. However, what is really important when you choose your bar spoon is that you get preferably one of these with a little skull on it. Because that's really cool if you're a rock star like me. Anyway, if you don't have one of these mixing glasses or you don't want to buy one of them, you can actually just use a regular uh, pint glass, which is just fine as well. Um, you know, same same idea. A lot of bars use these. You know, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, and then I'm going to jump back to the strainers because when you pour out of one of these glasses, I find it a lot easier using this. Um, it's a julep strainer. The, there's a history for, you used to drink mint juleps with these, um, which is a completely different story, a history lesson, so I'm not gonna go into that. Same thing, pour it into the glass, put your finger over it, and pour it into, you, into your cocktail glass. As I was talking about, if you muddle fruit, muddle just means like smashing or crushing um, uh, fruit, usually. I use this, um, it's a plastic, really heavy, strong muddler, and you know, anything that I <laughs> put this to will definitely get crushed. So you need one of these. Um, I like the plastic also because they're super easy to clean, and, and then over here, well obviously you're gonna need cutting board and a good knife just to you know slice your fruit and your garnishes and stuff like that. Um, this one comes in handy a lot especially because you want to work with fresh juices so if a, a recipe calls for lime juice you want to have fresh lime juice 
And it's very easy. You just put your fruit in here, cut a lime in half, put it right in here, put this on top, and then you squeeze the juice out of it. These won't fit like a grapefruit or an orange, but there are bigger ones if you, if you want to do that. This really comes in handy just for if you want to just juice one lime at a, you know, real quick. And then we have peelers. It's a regular peeler, you know. Um, don't really know what to say about this, but what we use them for are um, sometimes if you make an old fashioned, for example, or maybe a Negroni. A lot of people like to have an orange peel in, in those cocktails. So you have your orange, you peel it, and then you express the oils into the cocktail. Um, <clears throat> another peeler, this is actually called a channel knife. And if you've ever seen the, the pretty cocktails from, I would say, I mean, some people still use them, but 80s, 90s, where you have like lemon spirals in, inside of your cocktail or hanging off, off the side of the glass, those are usually made with, with this. And you know, it's fun sometimes. Um, so I have one of these just in case. Another thing that I find is, is interesting is to have um, ice trays. So something like this, they're really affordable. You know, you fill it up with some um, filtered water and put it in your freezer. Once they're frozen, what I like to do is I, I gently pop them out and I put them in a plastic container inside of the freezer and then I can do another batch. So you always have ice. I do that with all my ice. And then there's there are these um, that make, you call these uh, column ice. So if you have a tall glass, for example, and you put one of these in, instead of, you know, um, a bunch of ice cubes, it looks really cool. And so I hope you like this. I hope you learned something. I hope you know what to do now. If you don't, leave me a comment. If I'm not completely 100% clear, you know, please let me know because I'm doing this so that you'll learn something. That's, that's the whole idea. Um, anyway, take care, subscribe, like, and I'll see you soon.